movie taken in 1942 captures the return of Tulare Lake. Thousands of pelicans were drawn to the lake when it was revived by heavy runoff from the Sierra. The lake remained at about a quarter of its original size for a few years after being dry for decades. This one shows changes by the 1880s. Rob Hansen is a professor of biology at College of the Sequoias and an expert on the lake and its history. In 1937, there had been a long stretch of time where there was no lake out here. And so many of the people, it just wasn't even part of their sense of history or their, or their region. When, when the lake came back, that surprised a lot of them. This 1876 map of Tulare County shows a vast lake nearly a thousand square miles in size, the largest body of fresh water in the western United States. If the lake was here today, Kettleman City and Lemoor would be lakefront communities. The town of Alpaw would be on an island. Corcoran would be underwater. So what happened to this big lake? The shortest way to describe it is that as we began irrigating and using river water to grow crops, that same river water that used to fill a lake no longer reached the lake. So the lake really was dried up by irrigated agriculture. The effort to keep the lake bed dry intensified after World War II. Massive levees were built to keep the waters of the Kings, Tule, Kawea, and Kern rivers from refilling the lake so cotton and other crops could be grown. Farm giant J.G. Boswell grows much of the cotton on the lake bottom. The Army Corps of Engineers and local irrigation districts now work to keep that crop from being flooded. It, it's very much a challenge, and uh, uh, it's uh, good water management, and uh, the flood control facilities are all put to work uh, together in order to uh, minimize disruption economically to the farming area. One way to keep water out during flood years is to divert it north to the San Joaquin River. But when heavy runoff caused flooding along the San Joaquin this year, politicians made loud calls to let the water flow back into Tulare Lake, where it belongs. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if 7,000 homes and businesses go underwater in Fireball to save 100,000 acres of farmland in the, in the Tulare Lake Basin, That's you great. ain't seen nothing yet. Some of the environmental community also raised concerns about this unnatural diversion. And so we have these giant industrial-sized cotton farming operations on the bottom of a natural lake bed. And the water that would ordinarily flow into the Tulare Lake bottom from the Kings River is being funneled into the San Joaquin River Channel, uh, worsening the th uh, flood threat at Fireball. As it turned out, the Army Corps of Engineers eventually allowed a small amount of water in the lake bed and the flood threat eased. Irrigators say it proves the complex system works. But the fact remains, this system, created over 150 years, destroyed a huge natural environment. That the wildlife that was here when the Tulare Lake system was here was really, was, was unlike anything else in the western United States. These rangelands full of elk that were being chased by grizzly bears and pelicans nesting on islands here because there was so much fish. Today there is an effort to restore some of the natural environment of the Tulare Lake Basin. Recreating a thousand square mile lake is not the goal, but small remaining wetlands are being nurtured instead of drained and support for restoration may grow as more people learn what was once here. You know, I mean, we're growing so fast that many people moving here have never heard of it, have no sense that there was ever something like this out here. To me, that's a, a fascinating part of our history. From what was once the shore of Tulare Lake, Gene Higginson, ABC 30 Action News.